Now that we have fixed end moments applied to the ends of members, we're ready to lock, unlock, which really just means going through the process of calculating the balancing moment that we need to have equilibrium at each joint, distributing that balancing moment to the end moments, and then carrying over those end moments that have been distributed to the other sides of the members. So now I'm ready to calculate the balancing moment at fixed joints, at joints A and D, you know, I would have a balancing moment to negate the fixed end moment that's there, but the distribution factor is zero, so there's nothing going to be distributed to continue the process. The only significant joints are joints B and C. And at joint B here, in order for me to balance this joint, I have a plus 75 and a negative 125 for fixed end moments. I'm going to need another positive 50 kilonewton meters to balance that joint. And then for joint C, I'm going to need a negative 100 kilonewton meters to balance that joint. So with that balancing moment, I am ready to distribute to the end moments. And here for joint B, this 50 kilonewton meters, two thirds of it would go to member or end moment BA, which would be plus 33.33. Here for member BC, the, the distribution moment or the distributing moment would be plus 16.67. And the same thing here, this negative 100, this would be negative 33.33. And two thirds of it would be negative 66.67. And I don't want to get too crazy with decimals, so I've left it at that. Again, at the fixed ends, the distribution factor is zero, so my distribution moments, my DISTs, are zero, zero. And now I'm ready to draw that next horizontal line. Bam! And so I have completed the lock and first unlock. Now I'm ready to carry over and essentially lock again. As you re might recall, the carryovers here were each, um, we would have, we had a carryover factor from BA to AB, which sometimes I like to write right here, one half. And then we had a carryover factor from BC to CB. And notice this only happens within the members, one half. And a carryover factor from CB to BC. And then a carryover factor from CD to DC. And so a lot of times there's arrows indicating which direction you need to carry over. A lot of people like to do that. So that's a nice little reminder to do, right? And now we're ready to carry over. And so I'm gonna carry over half of this 33.33 to over here and AB or the moment at AB. So this will be plus 16.67. Uh, there's no carryover coming from side AB into BA. So this is a zero. Here this would be negative 16.67. Here would be 16.67 divided by two, which would be 8.33 put a little positive sign just to know there's nothing being carried over from NDC so that's zero and then half of negative 66.67 which is negative 33.33 great fantastic so now I'm ready for my second round of balancing and distributing and again joint A is fixed so there's no need to worry about that but if you look here, I have a zero and negative 16.67. So it's pretty trivial trying to calculate this balancing moment. The balancing moment is obviously plus 16.67. And so I am going to distribute that two thirds of positive 16.67 into NBA, which is plus 11.11. .11. Then here, the balancing moment for joint C is going to be negative 8.33, and one third of that is negative 2.78, and two thirds of that is negative 5.55. And here at the end ABs, those are zero, so here's my distribution. And now I go ahead and keep doing the same process. I'm going to carry over again, and I'm going to keep carrying over until I feel like the carryover moments are small enough that I'm good to go. So here, I'm just going to write out the rest of it for you. All right. If I went further, my carryovers would be small. That I don't think it's really going to make too much of a difference in my end results. And so now I'm ready to calculate or just sum up my columns so that I will have my end moments. And so each of these totals, I'm just going to add up all the values in the column. My totals will be my moment at end AB is negative 52.15 at end B 
be A, be 120.71 positive, and the negative 120.71. And if you did everything right, if you total up this joint right here, this should total to zero because these are the moments at the joint. This is 99.27, negative 99.27, and negative 12.12. So what we just did, all this was kind of like steps four, five, and six in this whole process to calculate these end moments at the bottom. So in summary, we had MAB was equal to negative 52.15 kilonewton meters, which means that we have 52.15 kilonewton meters going counterclockwise. Same with member MBA, we got positive 120.71 is 120.71 kilonewton meters going clockwise and so with the rest here this would be MBC so 120 point is negative 120.71 MCB is 99.27 kilonewton meters clockwise MBC is 99.27 kilonewton meters counterclockwise and MDC is equal to 12.12 .12 kilonewton meters counterclockwise. Now that we have the end moments, we can probably go ahead and calculate the reactions. But to do that, it's probably good to have a visual again of what you're doing here. And so let me take this drawing that's been kind of following us around. So here's my blown up drawing of the structure from before. And what this means with these end moments that I calculated, I can go ahead and kind of erase what's been going on, what's going on here. And I can draw the moments in their correct magnitude and orientation at the ends of each of the members. With these moments drawn, I am ready to calculate my end shears, which will ultimately lead me to being able to calculate all my reactions when I isolate the joints. This last step is to calculate reactions, but it's really kind of just applying equilibrium equations to each member. In order to determine the end shears, and I'll draw the end shears in purple here. So to look at the end shears here, let's, let's start with member AB. Here, if I take moments about point A, this will just be, let's see, negative VBA times, I believe the distance was uh, ten, 5 and 5, so 10 meters minus 60 kilonewtons times 5 meters minus 120.71 kilonewton meters plus 52.15 kilonewton meters equal to zero and I work this math out and this will tell me that VBA is equal to negative 36.86 kilonewtons which just means 36.86 kilonewtons upwards opposite of the way that I've drawn it and then if I do some of the forces in the vertical equal to zero we'll just get that VAB minus 60 kilonewtons minus VBA equal to zero and in this VBA I'm gonna substitute that negative 36.86 into here because I, my equilibrium equation reflects my drawing if I work that math out I will get that VAB this vertical is equal to 23.14 kilonewtons and since I got a positive result that means that that direction is the way I drew it is good so now if we just repeat that same equilibrium process for members BC and CD here's what will happen So I've calculated all my end shears. I can go back up here and replace these purple end shears with the correct magnitude and direction. And it's important to note that all of these these end shears and end moments are really internal end shears and end moments. And don't mess up the sign convention when you draw shear and moment diagrams later on. Let me go ahead and draw this out. So here are my members with the end shears and end moments, internal end shears and end moments. Now I want to calculate the reactions and I can do that by you know, looking at the joints and applying global equilibrium equations or whatever I want to do. Uh, I can even go from here and draw shear moment diagrams. But just to clarify the reaction calculations, uh, I'm going to go joint by joint just to make it pretty straightforward for me. So what I do is go joint by joint. And so here if I look at joint A 
and I assume that that's some infinitesimal cut. Here's my fixed joint A. I may have drawn at the beginning, I don't know if I did, but here there would have been an end moment A, or a, a reaction at point, joint A, and then a vertical AY that I wanna solve for. Uh, I'm gonna ignore the axial or the horizontal AX because that's gonna equal zero because I have no horizontal loading. And in this case right here, I would have from this side right here, which would represent end A, I'm gonna have the equal and opposite applied here. And that would tell me that I have 52.15 kilonewton meters and then 23.14 kilonewtons downwards, equal and opposite. And that tells me from equilibrium of this joint, you see some moments about this joint A tells me that MA is equal to 23.14 kilonewton meters and that direction is correct so counterclockwise and ay if i do some of the forces will equal 23.14 kilonewtons upwards which is also correct all right so that's my reactions at point a or joint a and then if i want to look at a uh, my vertical reaction at joint b so if you recall joint b look like this it was a roller support and if I, if I can again imagine that I made a cut just right at the joint, on both sides of that joint, I would have the equal and opposite moments from this end and this end apply to joint B. I would have a vertical reaction, I'll call that BY. And internally, I would have a 120.71 kilonewton meters and a 36.86 kilonewton and here this 120.71 kilonewton meters and 26.07 kilonewtons acting down and in here you can notice I'll have joint equilibrium if I take moments about joint B and if I take some of the forces in the vertical this will tell me that BY is equal to 36.86 plus 26. 07, which is 62.93 kilonewtons and the upwards direction is correct yes and if I go through that same process if I isolate joint C and D here is what I will get and these are my final answers these reactions at A at B at C and at D all right hopefully this video this very long video was insightful and even if you're with me if you're still watching and at the end of this video ask me some questions on Facebook and I will answer them for you alright take it easy see ya